Hi, today we're going to be talking about the metronome. How to choose one, how to use one, and I'll tell you how I use it, what um, parts of my musical activities they're useful for. So most of you probably know much of this, but I have been getting questions regarding the best ways to use the metronome. So here we go. First of all, what kind of metronomes can we possibly choose from? Well, I don't have the latest data, um, so if I miss something, please let me know in the comments. But as far as I know, there are three types of metronomes out there that you could purchase. One of them, and the oldest one, is a mechanical metronome that kind of looks like this. This one is actually the one that I used to use as a kid back in Riga. It's made in Riga, Latvia, probably over 100 years ago, and it's made by a company called Zimmerman. And I also have a piano uh, Zimmerman of that, that make uh, when I was a kid practicing. So these metronomes um, are very handy. They look nice. You can put them on the piano. Um, mine actually doesn't work very well anymore because the legs are not leveled correctly. But um, it's great to have. Um, one disadvantage of it, um, in my opinion, is that it's not that easy to find the exact tempo that you're looking for. You need to move this uh, metal kind of indicator. And the other disadvantage of a metronome like this, in my opinion, is that it's hard to take it with you. So this is a nice model um, for somebody to have at home. Of course, nowadays there are smaller models, there are some made of plastic, and there are some that are just very small and kind of rectangular. So those are also handy. But th still, the mechanism is the same. Now, um, the metronome that I use most of the time and that most of my musician friends use is the quartz type of a metronome. So you see right away, it's portable. Um, it's much easier to set the tempo because you just need to turn the dial. Um, and uh, it also usually has an A, um, which should be sounding right now. Oh, the A is in the middle. There it goes. So the A, obviously, if you're a pianist, you don't need one but uh, wind players and string players sometimes need one, so that's a handy feature. And um, besides the regular uh, tempo beat, it also has a flashing light, which is nice if you don't wanna be hearing a beat going off when you play, but you wanna check your speed so you have this visual. So um, this is a type of a metronome that I used to carry with me when I gave piano lessons as well. And especially when it came to kids, um, I really started on the very first lesson to introduce them to different lengths of notes, of different beats. And the first thing I used to say was the metronome is your friend. Because unless I said that, I noticed that when they heard this uh, beat, it made them nervous because it kind of made them feel constrained that they really have to follow along with it or to play something right and, and it made them nervous. And um, I actually still find that a lot of people um, are a bit nervous when the metronome is turned on. So uh, let's talk about how to use it um, in a more relaxing way and how helpful it is. Oh, but before we do that, I'm sorry, there's a third type of metronome that I haven't mentioned. Maybe that's because I really dislike that kind of a metronome are the electronic ones. Some of them uh, look like a credit card and I'm sure there are all kinds of um, more contemporary ones with bells and whistles. But those, um, at least back in the days when I was teaching and that was a choice, those had a very annoying kind of beep instead of a beat. There was like this electronic eh, 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 and it was usually even a much higher pitch than you just heard. So when I would tell my kids' students get a metronome and next time I'd come to their house and they proudly showed me this really cool little credit card type thing, um, which made these beeps. I used to always make them laugh because I would put it somewhere like on the couch and covered by a cushion because they really, um, you know, they were very loud. So I don't like those, but if you do, that's fine. Um, my idea is that really all we need from a metronome is a beat, right? We don't need, as far as I'm concerned, we don't need different pitches of beats, we don't need emphasis of different beats, we just need a beat and we need a measure, the number that shows you how many beats per minute you're going to play at, and that's really it. And pianists don't really need an A. And um, also the flashing light helps, but it's not mandatory. So because this is portable, it doesn't make a strange sound, 
and it's very easy to um, change the tempo because on the electronic ones, you have to press, you know, a lot of times, let's say if you're going from 40 beats per minute to 120, it just takes longer time. Um, so this is the kind of metronome that I prefer, a quartz metronome. So how do we set a metronome as long as we're talking about that? Well, um, there are two choices we need to make. We need to make the choice of the speed, which is beats per minute. On this metronome, it goes from 40 uh, to 208 beats per minute. And of course, 60 beats per minute is equivalent to a second. So there's that. Um, there are some tempo indications usually on metronomes. Don't take them. They're not written in stone. It's just slow to fast. Composers sometimes do very different um, indications with a number that wouldn't match. So don't worry about whether something is exactly in Dante. But the important thing is which, what kind of a note value do we set the metronome to, right? Because we can um, play a piece that has, you know, from whole notes until 32nd, 64th notes. So how do we choose? Um, so most of the time it would be either a quarter note or an eighth note, right? You'd look at the key signature and you would also look at what is the shortest length of the note present. So if you have a piece that has mostly quarter notes and half notes and a few eighth notes, like maybe a more of a beginning uh, piece, then you set it to a quarter note. Of course, the time signature, as I already said, is important, but most time signatures you're going to see are going to be either a quarter note and, um, as a value of counting or the eighth note. So hence, we're going to do that. Now, um, I made a video, which I'm going to link you to at the bottom of this, um, about this allemand from my transcription of the Bach cello suites. This is the allemand from cello suite six. And if you look at this particular rhythmical um, pattern, you see that there are a lot of um, 32nd notes, or even 64th notes. So for this piece, and I highly recommend that you try um, something like this as an exercise, and um, you can get it for free on my website, um, you would probably set it to an eighth note, but no less than that, because otherwise there are going to be too many beats and really the key to understanding rhythm and counting is being able to subdivide a beat, right? Um, I think um, the syllables such as end, uh, e, end, uh, all of those syllables don't really teach us how to calculate the lengths of notes. They just teach us syllables and sometimes they can be quite misleading. So you set the metronome either to the quarter note or to the eighth note in most cases, unless you're working on a very specific piece and that necessitates something else, but maybe your teacher will help you with that. So how do we use the metronome? Well, as teachers, we use it with beginners um, from the very start when telling them the difference, for example, between quarters, half notes, and especially dotted half notes, because for some beginners, it's difficult to switch from um, a double duple meter with half notes to a time signature of three quarter time. That sometimes takes a while for them to um, get used to because we're bipeds and we're used to, and we're much more comfortable thinking in twos when we're counting, not in threes. But they're going to start doing little waltzes, or you will, and it's really important to be able to understand um, a dotted half note, and actually any dotted note will benefit from an explanation by demonstrating with a metronome in other words, if you're trying to explain, for example, a dotted um, eighth note a rhythm with a 16th note, then you will set uh, the metronome to the 16th note and explain that the dotted eighth note needs to uh, last for three beats and so on. Anyway, that's what I'm talking about. Dotted notes are very important when you're starting to teach. And of course, for beginners, um, many rhythms are useful to be uh, gone over with, with a metronome. Um, and generally, the most um, commonly made mistake by beginners is not holding long notes for long enough. And for that, it's also very important to turn on the metronome and, and to show them that they're not holding it long enough. A lot of, uh, of the last notes of, for example, journey studies or just many pieces when you have maybe a, a whole note at the end, people tend, beginners of any age, tend not to hold it 
for long enough. So the metronome is very useful. Personally, I use the metronome very often when I'm learning a piece and when I need to repeat it many times in order to memorize it because um, that kind of settles me down and helps me focus and helps me in a way kind of resign to uh, a drudgery of this particular type of practicing, which is necessary. And just having this steady beat calms me down. Maybe if I'm feeling agitated, it kind of slows down my heart rate and, and I sit and I methodically play through however many repetitions I want to play through. So um, I use it uh, in that way. Um, I don't use the metronome all the time when I practice and neither should you um, because once you learn the piece and you know what the correct rhythm is, um, you need to be able to play it uh, according to your own feeling and there will be some spots where you're going to want to slow down a bit to show maybe a certain harmonic variety or you may want to speed up when there is a momentum or the composer calls for it. So. Um, all of that is very important to indicate, especially when the composer writes down instructions to that effect. That is going to be a very different ball game than just um, speeding up unintentionally because you're not realizing you're speeding up. Or, for example, slowing down when you're playing a part that's too hard and you can't make it at the assigned tempo and you just haven't practiced it enough. So it's very important to differentiate um, deviating from the tempo because you're not quite sure you're not able to keep up or because it's your choice. So it will sound differently to the listener as well. And needless to say, when it's your choice of changing the tempo, it will sound more convincing. And before that, you really need to, and you will know what the correct tempo, rhythm, patterns, how to play it correctly before you can um, experiment with different fluctuations of rhythm. Of course, um, stylistically, you need to be aware of um, what the composer and the style of the period that the piece is written and calls for. Some pieces, such as classical and Baroque pieces, can be played and practiced with a metronome more regularly than, let's say, romantic, impressionist pieces, just because of the virtue of the content. Um, so it's easier to um, keep practicing with a metronome if you're playing a Haydn sonata um, or if you are trying to really get through, let's say, a slow movement of a Beethoven sonata where there are a lot of very interesting uh, note values sometimes. There's sometimes 32nd, 64th notes and um, you need the metronome to make sure you're doing it right and you need to keep the quarter note in mind as um, a unit of counting, otherwise you can really get way, way too slow. In those pieces like that, you may need to keep the metronome with you a little longer than in pieces by Chopin or Debussy, where there needs to be a lot more free reign of momentum and mood. Another way to use the metronome is to check if um, you are at a certain tempo. And of course, if you're practicing a piece that will eventually be played faster, you can raise the speed gradually as you play. Um, and of course, most often the metronome is used by professional musicians just to make sure they stick to a certain tempo, which is either indicated by the composer or decided upon by themselves for a recording or for a performance or agreed upon between them and their chamber music partners. Um, and there the number becomes very important because we need to play at that speed for a while so that we're comfortable at that speed. So um, these are pretty much um, the ways that I use the metronome and um, there could be some others. Again, if you know what they are, please let me know how I use the metronome. What kind of a metronome do you have? And um, I hope that this video was helpful. Uh, again, I do recommend um, a quartz metronome, they all use more or less like that if you don't have one. I don't think that you need anything other than a steady beat, a light beat, and an A if you're not a pianist, but you, if you're watching this video, you probably are, and you could take this one with you and use it with your teacher at the lessons. So thanks very much. I hope um, you will use the metronome in the times that it will be helpful to you. Not all the time. Remember the metronome is your friend. And um, I'm going to put 
this Allemand from Cello Suite number no. six in my piano transcription up for free on my website. So you could use it as a metronome exercise. There is a corresponding video, which I'll also link um, on the bottom of this. And I hope that you will um, use it as an exercise for your metronome and rhythm reading. And again, here you should set it to an eighth note slowly and how slowly you can decide for yourself. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if uh, you have any questions or comments below and I look forward to seeing you next time.